welcome to my allotment. Today I'm talking about growing peas. I had a great pea year this year and I thought I'd share what I've learned growing these beauties. I can't believe they're still cropping. If you're a new viewer, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I share videos at least three times a week and I just love sharing all I've learned with you guys. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, of course. Let's get into it. It's Sunday evening. It's glorious. Ah, yes, so I thought I'd go on here and talk a bit quickly about how I've grown my peas this year because it's been very, very successful. And I had a few requests for this video. I know it's completely not the right time for you, but let it be an inspiration for you for next year. And you can always get the seed order in early, right? So peas are best grown from early spring. They don't like the weather to be too hot. They quite like the, the wetter, grayer kind of spring, which is a bit funny because it's sort of the opposite of what we had in May, right? But um, yeah, so or before then, I guess it was the perfect uh, pea growing weather. So, right, I grew three types of peas this year. Um, let's start with that. So that, the first one is a Monge 2 variety, which is uh, the Earth Oregon Sugar Pot. I quite like the flavor. There was nothing special about it. Um, it's a fairly tall variety. It was early. I, you know, judging from Instagram, I got quite an early harvest on this one and it's still cropping. So in that sense, it's very good. However, if you, f if you forget to pick or if you uh, can't find them, which is always a problem with March 2, then the pea that developed was nothing special. So if you can find a March 2 that's also a good eater as a pea or a sugar snap, you're onto a winner. I'm thinking maybe I'll grow, um, a, a, a purple variety or something that's easier to find <laughs> because they're a bloody nightmare, aren't they? And this is country value. I have no idea where I got these seeds from. Um, the other one I grew was the Hearst Green Shaft pea. And these were really, really good. So this is uh, from the Seed Cooperative. And I still have quite a lot of seeds, so I'm hopefully I can grow them next year. So it's a dwarf pea variety and it's absolutely delicious. So I would say because it's dwarf, you might want to think of growing a few more because it doesn't crop as heavily as a tall variety does. It was very early, I'd say as well. Uh, and really, really big peas inside those pods. Um, they were not as big as the alderman pea, um, which is a over two meters tall type of variety. And the pods are really, really fat. So they're more like a marrow pea. To me, it, you know, it, it tastes is more like a marrow pea. I mean, what is a marrow pea? Maybe it is a marrow pea. I don't know. Um, but it's not as, as sweet as a garden pea for me, um, or a petit pois or whatever. So it's great for putting into, if you're making a stew, you can put them in last minute or as a filler or whatever, but they're not, they're not that great to eat raw, I found, when they were fully grown. Um, they were a bit too mealy, but I would grow them again because just as a good, is a good, um, it's a good cooking pea, right? But it's not so good maybe to eat raw. The toddler liked all the peas, she didn't mind. And she even started eating these raw now. So she's, uh, <laughs> maybe she's onto something. Um, I'm sure they're, um, I'm sure they're full of, of nutrients and, uh, and fiber and all that. So I'm sure they're good for you. But I would say with this one, maybe because they were cropping later, they were more affected by the pea moth. So we'll go on to that in a minute. So these were the late last to start cropping. Uh, they grew tallest and they are still cropping quite heavily, but they are, um, 
yeah you have to wait for them basically so with the peas part of why you grow them so early is because they don't like the hot summer weather uh, so now in July is really is the time when it stops the season for peas I'm still getting some but uh, the vine is sort of dying back now and partly why you want to get it over with sooner as soon as possible is because of the pea moth so the pea moth arrives in July and it lays uh, its eggs in the pod and from that hatches a little maggot and it'll start eating the the peas inside the pod you can't tell until you open it and then it's like ah gross um, it, so the hearse green shaft was cropping at the same time as the alderman that were affected but these ones weren't so maybe it was a deterrent to have the alderman uh, an earlier an earlier uh, pest on them is the pea weevil uh, they eat around the leaf of the pea plant and make them like a scalloped edge so you need to time your planting out of the pea so that the plant is robust enough so that when they arrive the weevils arrive they won't decimate a small plant uh, so that they will be able to withstand it they'll grow through it, grow past it basically so it's all about the timings so where i'm at in oxfordshire i can go through my timeline and then you can adjust for it i think i'm in 9b zone i mean it's oceanic climate here so it's a bit tricky using those uh, american um, zones but let's see here so i first sowed them 14th of march and by the 19th of march they'd sprouted and come up so i i um multi-sow them which means that i put if I'm growing uh, for pods, then I put in two to three seeds per module. So, so three seeds into something like this, a size like this with compost. You can even go smaller. And it can feel like maybe that's quite a lot of pea. And especially if you're growing peas for shoots, which is sort of the same sowing timeline, uh, you go up to five seeds per module, right? So with multi-sowing of peas, it works really well. It means that you get really, you know, they, they, they do really well being multi-sown. They like being together uh, and you get a lot of filler in your, in your climbing, you know, there's no gaps or whatever so they, they really fill up there and you really get a lot of crop on a small area so i after sowing them i take the tray into the house and i, I keep them in the house until i see there's movement you know so i see them pop out they don't need to be anywhere where this it's in a, on a windowsill or anything like that they just need constant heat and then i take them out to the greenhouse i have a greenhouse but a cold frame or one of them little greenhouses would be fine you need to keep the seed away from the mice until they have sprouted and sprouted quite well because they love these kind of seeds uh, so this is the problem when you sow them out directly into the soil or into your beds that they will be eaten by rodents so you have to over sow quite a lot and still you can have big gaps so i like to raise them this way so if i keep them in the house until they're sprouted and i move them out then i reduce the risk dramatically of them being eaten and i also try to keep them high up uh, <laughs> you know i know the mice can climb but it seems to be working and uh let's see so on the they were sown mid-March and on the 1st of April they were this tall uh, and looking quite lush. And then on the 4th of April they were like this 
and beyond and that's when I planted them out. So planting distances for these multi sown is actually quite tight. So if you're doing dwarf peas or if you're doing peas for shoots, you can plant them f at 15 centimeters or you can you can go you can go up to 25, but you can plant them as tight as 15 centimeters and that is 15 centimeters on a grid pattern. So you can have a whole bed just full of pea shoots for example. Uh, I decided to do all of mine in a row as so I was going to have one support and I was going to have that across, sorry, along the bed. So it was a one long uh, pea sewing <laughs> session. So I started with the Monge 2, which is a fairly tall variety, and I planted them at 15 centimeters distance. Or maybe I went lower. Yeah, I think I went lower to 10 centimeters because I was just doing one row. Because the tall peas, the alderman, they you can grow them at 10 centimeters in these multi sown modules. And then if you're doing another row, it needs to be a meter away, right? So it's quite quite long because they they will shadow each other and also the root system, like they need the water. So I did one long row and it was the Manch 2 and then there was the dwarf peas and then there was the alderman and um, her screen shaft, sorry, and then the alderman, which I didn't, I didn't think about it. I should have planted the dwarf piece somewhere else because they didn't really need that tall structure for, for climbing up, right? So they only get maximum a meter tall. So they would work really well with pea sticks. And then continuing on the timeline, by the end of April, if I planted the first, no, the 4th of April, and then by the end of April, there were the first flowers on the Monch 2, which were the first to show up. And then in May, they were cropping regularly, so I could pick. Um, so my God, I've been picking through May, June, and now July of Monch 2. That's pretty good. Yeah. So that's how I did it. I mean, <laughs> there's not much to it, not much to it, but I think what it comes down to is the timings and a bit of luck, of course, but uh, timing specifically so that it's they're a sown early enough as soon as you can. They are cold tolerant plants, so you can plant them out, you can sow them very, very early in your season because they can withstand frost, uh, not continuous frost, and they can't withstand frozen ground of course uh, but they can withstand night night frosts much more than any other uh, many other plants and you need to get them big enough in where they're gonna be so that when the bean weevils arrive that they will only they will only affect a few of the leaves and the plant is already so robust uh, that they will just grow through it and then you want them to be able to crop early enough so that the pea moth doesn't become too big of an issue. Uh, the other thing, I guess, is just general pests. So I've heard people having issues with pigeons going for their peas, uh, for rabbits eating the, uh, the stems, you know. Wind damage is a big one. So having a robust, especially for the tall peas, having a robust structure that will not fall over and what I also had to do I used um, some wire at the at the bottom to tie them in but then I put a um, just a normal bird netting that you have for uh, fruit trees for example that are tied to my structure and they loved climbing up that with the tendrils but it got to be so many so many um, branches on it so it got so heavy in those little tendrils uh, in the wind just wasn't enough so I tied strings as well at certain intervals around it to hold it in place uh, yeah it got to the point maybe where the, there was just the, the, it, it was just so many branches and leaves that it was difficult to find the piece but uh, yeah I'd rather have it that way and now that I'm gonna pull them it means that maybe I'll find enough seed to 
so for next year so so collecting seeds from peas is not a problem because they don't tend to cross pollinate so it should be completely fine just collecting them even though they've been growing right next to other peas so yeah for the end i just thought i'd just uh, show you where they are and what they're looking like now i will have inserted other footage where they're looking a bit better but this is where they're at now so let's go have a look oh, i just love these evenings so good so this is the pea structure from one side and you can see the wind the prevailing wind um and yeah so we have the munch two variety here and you can see the netting it's been climbing up so i had to reinforce because my old bamboo canes broke uh yeah so i'm just lucky it stayed up i guess but yeah you can see the munch two there's some dry pods here and there's still munch two coming and flowers so there's a point where the whole thing is just going to be yellow uh, but it's still cropping so i thought i'd leave it and i don't necessarily need the space yet so and this is the dwarf uh the hearst one and these are some pods still come in and they're not full yet so i thought i'd leave them and there's some tiny ones down here but yes the same same here there's still flowers and I guess we would still have some pods coming, but it's definitely slowed down in the production. And yeah, you can see it didn't grow taller than that. And this is the alderman. And it's definitely, definitely looking yellow now. And there's some pods on here. So they're much larger pod. Um, and these are some that are still that were still cropping so because this is in gets more sun so it's finished cropping this side sooner than the other side because it's, i guess it's more in the shade just uh, another bonus so these are still full uh, i don't know if i can open this but yeah they're huge well but yeah Massive peas. I mean, they're fine. They're just not as good as the her screen shaft. So if I'd only grown alderman, I would have been happy. But because I had those super sweet, super sweet peas that were like like candy, I I guess I was expecting that as well. But. Yeah, I mean, still had an amazing, amazing pea harvest this year. So let me see if I can get one of these Marsh 2. So they're still really good. As I said, if they do go beyond this, they're less, less edible, I'd say. But yeah, they're really good. I just wish they were like yellow or purple or something so I could actually find them. <laughs> But yeah, let me know if you have any questions about growing peas. And I'll try to answer them. I'm obviously, maybe I had a really lucky year or whatever. But I feel like I got, I, I got something. I got, I, uh, I definitely cracked growing peas on my plot this year. So give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you're a new viewer. And I'll see you next time.